What is going on everyone? Today we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I recently got pulled over with guns in my car, so we're going to get to that uh, in a minute. But the first thing we're going to talk about today is something that a lot of people have requested over the last few weeks, which was, can you please do a video on what you should and should not do when you get pulled over by the police? Uh, a lot of um, people who asked this were people of color, black men, black women who were saying, hey, we want to know, like, so, you you know, you were a cop, you did the job for 13 years. Um, uh, thankfully, I am no longer a cop, thankfully. But uh, in my 13 years, I was uh, very active with motor vehicles, stopped, uh, stopped thousands and thousands of cars. Um, and um, it was one of the things that uh, I was known for in my department, stopping cars. And of course, when uh, valid writing tickets, uh, fallacy, not everyone who gets stopped, not everyone you see uh, on the side of the road gets a ticket. Um, so stopping people is the deterrent as it is. So when you, when someone is driving down the road, they see a police officer with someone pulled over, the automatic assessment is that person is getting a ticket. Not always true. Most of the people I stopped actually got warnings, but, uh, because of the volume of people I stopped, uh, many got uh, tickets, uh, or I was able to issue a lot of tickets rather. So, um, people said, what's the secret to not getting shot when you are pulled over by the police. So uh, I will start with this story. Um, uh, well, let me start with this. I have been pulled over, not many times, because I drive very slow and I'm never in a rush to get anywhere because it's not worth it. Never make up time in the car. Uh, someone told me that and it was a great piece of advice. I heard that from someone and it's a great piece of advice. So um, uh, when I have gotten pulled over, I do the same thing. And I do what I would have wanted to see as a police officer pulling someone over. Now, I, as a police officer, did the same thing whether I stopped an old lady or a young man. Whether they were white, whether they were black, whether they were Asian, didn't matter. I went through the same protocol. Now, I did that one because I wanted to make sure I hit all my checklists when stopping someone. And I want to make sure that I, I don't miss anything. So I just went through the same exact procedure every time I stopped a car. One of the things I did, and I'm going to do a separate video on this for the Sheepdog Nexus, uh, which is the 221B training platform, which is private for our exclusive members only, is why you should always approach on the passenger side of the vehicle. So uh, our Nexus members will get a sneak peek at that video shortly. But I did the same thing. Now, what that also did for me by doing the same thing every car I stopped was it got me in the practice of my safety checks and going through my punch list of what to do. But it also gave me the ability for when I went to court to testify to say on the stand when a defense attorney would say, well, why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why did you do this? And I would say, that's because that is what I always do on motor vehicle stops. I treated your client no differently than anyone else I stopped. And if you reviewed the videotape of any of my car stops, you would see I methodically went through the same thing. So no one was ever able to say to me, well, you did this with my client. Why was that different from anyone else? Nope. With your client, I did the same thing as I did with the 97-year-old grandmother that was driving. So, that being said, how do you not get shot by the police? Well, let me start with my story really quick about how I got pulled over, literally this weekend, leaving a training course in New Hampshire, and um, I got pulled over. Uh, the premise of it was I had a motor vehicle violation. I uh, was pulling out of a gas station as I fueled up, and my GPS said, uh, make a U-turn. And there was a break in the road, in the, in the islands of the roadway, and I executed a U-turn. Unbeknownst to me, apparently there was no U-turn there. So I was pulled over by a police officer. Now, this was a white police officer uh, in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, and it's a backwoods kind of town, nice little city. Um, white police officer, moderate height, uh, redheaded guy, uh, and 
the police officer was originally from Alabama. So it's funny because someone commented on one of my posts. Uh, someone said they were from Alabama and someone immediately commented, you're from Alabama, so you must be a racist, uh, which is the mentality of some of the people who are mentally ill in our society today. So um, this young man walked up alongside the driver's side of my vehicle, uh, something that, like I said, we'll get to. Um, and I went through my checklist for when I get pulled over. So just as, as a police officer, I had a checklist of what I did as I pulled over a car, as I approached the car. Um, I have a checklist that I also do um, that when I get pulled over, like I said, doesn't happen often, but we're all humans. We all make mistakes. So um, first thing I do is I keep both hands on the steering wheel and I don't reach for anything. Well, actually, let me go back a step. The first thing I do is I don't take my seatbelt off. So now I know I have my seatbelt off here, but let me just put it on for the sake of this. So what a lot of people do automatically is they take that seatbelt off and they start going for the glove box to get their registration out. Or they, they take that seatbelt off and they go into their center console looking for their wallet, looking for something, okay? Um, Listen, during the day, if I get pulled over, I keep my seatbelt on. That way, when the police officer comes up, that's one thing he can't say. You're not wearing your seatbelt. You don't know how many times I heard, oh, I, I just took my seatbelt off to look for my documents. Well, believe it or not, most of the people I stopped when it was for speeding or they were going down the highway, I didn't know what they look like. I didn't. I couldn't tell if I'm stopping a man, a woman, a black person, a white person. Believe me, when you're in a patrol car, you will realize when people go by you speeding or people go by and create a violation, you're fixated on the violation. 99% of the time, I didn't know the gender or the skin color or whatever until I actually pulled the car over and I looked in their side view mirror and I kind of got a glimpse of who they were. That is the only time. And at nighttime, you never know who you're stopping. So first thing I do is I keep the seatbelt on. I don't take it off to go fidget anywhere, which brings me to my second point. I don't fidget anywhere. Whether it's day or night, I don't fidget anywhere. I keep my hands on the wheel and I keep them in a place, not on the bottom of the wheel, but I keep them on the top of the wheel. So as the police officer approaches either from the driver's side or from the passenger side, they can clearly see my hands. And I am not in the process of digging in my glove box. I'm not in the process of digging in my center console. I'm not going like this, trying to get my wallet out of my pants and taking my seatbelt off and trying to dig for my wallet. I'm not doing any of that because that leads to suspicion. And that can make a police officer nervous because if you have a weapon, it might be in your glove box. If you have a weapon, it might be in your center console. If you have a weapon, it might be you know, in the belt line of your pants. So if you want to survive the stop and you don't want to cause alarm for the man walking up with a gun, don't dig anywhere. Keep your hands on the wheel. Now, let me stop there and say this. Survival is something that humans by evolution want to do, right? And any species that doesn't do what is required to survive or doesn't adapt to the environment so that they can survive will eventually become as extinct, right? We all know that, right? So those species that can adapt to the changing environment survive and thrive, and those species that cannot adapt to the environment end up dead. That being said, if you want to survive, and I will say this to young black men, because that seems to be the topic, right, in the news. So I'll say this to young black men. Coming from someone who did the job for 13 years, I pulled over, I don't know how many black men in my lifetime, how many white men, how many white women, how many black women. I stopped them all. I looked at the motor vehicle violation. Not, I'm not looking at the driver. I'm the violation person. A lot of speeding, a lot of DWIs, which is tracking the vehicle. So that being said, if you are smart, if you are an intelligent human being and you have an understanding, which right now in this moment, I'm not sure if there is a single black man in America that doesn't know that resisting arrest or not listening to the police during a police encounter, especially a white police, but it could be a black police officer because plenty of black cops shoot black people. You should obey the law 
you should not resist. You should not try to hold court on the side of the road. And if you are placed under arrest, you should not fight. You should not take weapons. You should not try to assault the police officers. Nothing. Now, I believe I could ask any black man in America right now if it would be a good idea to do any of those things should you encounter the police. And I am pretty sure any black male in America right now would tell you that would be a bad idea. You're probably going to end up getting shot by the police. So, if you care about your survival and you are an intelligent human being, don't do those things. If you don't care about your survival and you are not intelligent, you are going to do those things and there are going to possibly be consequences, okay? So don't let your, uh, your, your concern for being right or having your rights violated, put all that stuff aside for a minute and ask yourself, is it worth dying for? Now, if the answer in your mind is saying, you know what? It is worth dying for. My vi rights are being violated. I feel like I'm being stopped for no reason. Yada, 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 whatever you want. Hey, all right, go for it. But you know you are putting your life on the line and you might end up shot and you might end up dead. So if you choose that, know that that is a consequence right now in today's world. I am not saying that is right because we know we've seen a lot of bad police shootings. Not a lot, but we've seen a hand or a handful of bad police shootings. But obviously there's good shootings where someone is assaulting the police, trying to disarm them, and the police end up shooting them. And then people are like, oh, survival is your biological go-to. If you do anything that you knowingly is going to affect your survival, well, then that means you're not meant to survive. So adapt to the current climate. Everyone knows what's going on with police, right? Everyone knows police are actually backing off a little bit right now. But if you want to survive and you care about your life, don't do the things that I'm going to explain in this video. So hands on the steering wheel. When the officer comes up, whether they come to your driver's side window or your passenger side window, Listen, it always helps to be friendly, but you don't need to kiss a butt, okay? If you are cordial, I always tell people cordial. If you want to be friendly, be friendly, but be civil and be cordial. Never sit there and have an attitude because you know what? Nobody likes getting pulled over. And whether you realize you did something wrong, you're like, oh, he caught me, or you feel like you did nothing wrong and you don't know why you're being pulled over, you should maintain the same demeanor. You should maintain the same demeanor. Cordial, level-headed, calm. Hands on the top of the steering wheel. We're not digging for anything. You put the window down. Good day, officer. Good day, okay. And most likely, he's going to ask you for your documents. At that point, you say, Officer, my documents are in my glove box, or my documents are in my center console, or my wallet is in my pocket. Um, I just want to let you know that, uh, uh, is it okay if I go ahead and get that? Obviously you can watch me, uh, you know, go ahead. And when he says, okay, be clear in what you are doing. I'm going to get my wallet, it's in my right pocket, and that's where my license is, okay. Officer, is it okay if I take off my seatbelt? It's, you know, it's going to just help me move around a little bit. Can you watch me take off my seatbelt? Okay, there you go. All right, I'm going to get my wallet out. Okay, here's my wallet, um, and here's my license. Okay, uh, you need my registration and insurance. Now, in New Hampshire, the officer said he didn't need my registration or insurance. He just needed my license. So I said, okay. However, if he said he needed my registration or insurance that is in the glove box, I would have said, is it okay if I uh, open the glove box? That's where my documents are. Uh, obviously, of course, you could watch. And I move slowly. I don't do anything fast. I don't say, oh, it's, it, it's in my glove box and die for the glove box, right? You don't want to do that. Do everything slow, do everything calm, and let the police officer know exactly what you're doing. When you're about to take your hands off the wheel, you say, uh, it's in my glove box. Is it okay if I just go get it out of the glove box? It's in the little uh, owner's manual folder. Okay, yeah, great, thank you, okay. And reach over slowly, you get the documents, you hand it to the officer. Now, 
at this point, a lot of people like to say, officer, why was I pulled over? And I tell people to wait. I tell people, wait until the officer is about to tell you, about to walk away. Because if he hasn't told you already, that's the point where you can ask. So, typically he'll look at your documentation and then he or she will say, just so I don't have to say he or she for this whole time, let's just try to say the officer or he, okay? I understand there's female officers. Um, you, they say, uh, okay, this is why I stopped you. Okay, all right. Now, if they don't say it, if you feel they're about to walk away, keep your hands on the wheel and say, excuse me, officer, uh, would you mind telling me what I was stopped for? What, do you, what, in this moment, you don't say, what are you stopping me for? This is bullshit. You say, officer, ma ma can I ask what I did wrong? And at that point, they will tell you. They will tell you what you did wrong. I'll get to a story about not hearing what I did wrong in a minute. So they will tell you. Okay. So once they tell you, they may have some questions for you prior to telling you or after telling you. They may say, where are you headed? Tell them where you're headed. Now, when it comes to the questioning, it's important to do one thing. Tell the truth. Now, officers, when they're asking you questions, most of the time they know the answer already. Sometimes they're asking questions to paint a picture to see who they're dealing with, okay? That's their investigation technique, and there's nothing wrong with that. Tell them where you're coming from. Be truthful. If they ask you where you headed, where are you headed? Tell them where you're headed. Be truthful. If they ask you if you've had anything to drink, be truthful. Say, uh, no, officer, no, I don't drink. Okay. All right. Sometimes they'll say, you have any anything in the car I should know about? Some places that's illegal to ask that now. Some places they still ask that. Once again, hands still on the wheel. Anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? No, sir. Any drugs in the car? No, sir. Now, here's where we pause. If you've been drinking, don't lie, because what you don't know is that there's an odor of alcoholic beverage spewing out of your mouth, and the second you crack that window, it hits the cop in the face from 10 feet away. You don't know that. Police officers are trained to smell that and detect that. So if you have been drinking, don't lie, because when they ask you if you've had anything to drink, they already know the answer. So say, uh, yes, officer, I did have a drink uh, at, at dinner, or I did have a couple of drinks. Yes. Okay, great. Be honest with them. Don't lie, because the second you lie, they know you they're dealing with someone who's trying to cover up, okay? If you have drugs in the car, this is the time to own it. This is not the time to hope that the officer doesn't know or doesn't find your illegal drugs. Now, if you choose to lie about having drugs in the car, this is the moment where you have to accept one thing. Should that police officer at any point locate any illegal substance in your vehicle subsequent to a search at that point you must take ownership and own that you got caught and that is not the point where you want to start becoming a roadside attorney start talking about your constitutional rights your civil rights talk about your dad knows a lawyer your dad knows the mayor your dad knows the governor your mom's friends with this person that is not the time that you want to say any of that that is what you say to the prosecutor when you go to court in the back room when everyone talks quietly and it's you and him and you say, Mr. Prosecutor, uh, I don't know if this helps, but my father is friends with Mayor so-and-so or whatever. And if that person wants to give you courtesy based on that, that's fine. But throwing out that stuff on the side of the road to the police officer is not recommended and is not going to go well for you. So, hands on the wheel. When he asks you questions, you answer truthfully, knowing that if you lie, you must at some point deal with the consequences of that lie. Okay, great. So um, they're going to say, okay, sit tight. That's what I would say. Sit tight. I'll be right back with you. Now, sometimes I would tell people if I knew they were getting a warning, I would tell them, I'm just going to give you a warning. Sit tight. I'll be right back with you. Why did I do that? Because now... 
I don't want them sitting there the whole time white knuckling the steering wheel thinking that I'm back in the police car writing them a ticket. There's no reason to keep their heart rate up and keep their nerves pinned because when I come back up, that's only going to cause more angst between us. So if I know that I'm going to give them a warning based on why I stopped them, I will say, all right, sit tight for just a minute. I'm not giving you a ticket. You're going to get a warning, but sit tight. I'm just going to check your documents. I'll be right back with you. Okay, great. Keep your hands on the wheel. When the officer is back in his patrol car, do not let him see your head going like this or you reaching for stuff and doing stuff. While you're pulled over and possibly getting a ticket or whatever, and the police officer is behind you, is not the time to decide where you decide to organize your center console. That is not the time to do it. You organize your center console on Sunday when you're bored and you have nothing to do. Don't decide to organize and clean up the old fast food napkins and, you know, you know, pulling spring bottles on your floorboards. That's not the time to do it. Stay still, look forward, hands on the wheel. If you want to look in the mirror to see what the cop is doing and see if he's, when he's getting out of his car, you want to look in the side view mirror, fine. I do the same thing. I want to know when he's about to come back up. When the officer comes back up, He's going to do one of two things. He's going to release you with a warning or he's going to issue you a summons. A summons, motor vehicle ticket, is something that no one likes. However, if you committed an offense, that's what you have to deal with. We live in a country of laws. If you feel you did not commit that offense, it's okay for you to internalize that. To verbalize it to the police officer on the side of the road saying, this is BS, I wasn't speeding, or I stopped at that stop sign, that is not the time. And that is not going to help you. You have to know survival mechanisms and the when to do things and when not to do things. Okay? So, it's kind of like when you have a boss at work and your boss tells you some BS that you know is total BS and is not going to work, it's not going to help, it's not going to do anything, and you, you're in your mind, you're thinking this guy's an effing idiot. You don't say that to your boss. What? You wait till the meeting's over, and then you go back to your desk, and you text your buddy, or you wait till you go out to lunch with your coworker, and you tell your coworker at lunch in the privacy of Chipotle that the boss is an effing idiot and has no idea what he's talking about and to share what he told you, okay? That's what you do with your ticket. You get your ticket and you say, thank you, officer. Be safe. Have a nice day, whatever. And that's it. You don't say, this is bullshit. What are we doing? I can't believe... None of that helps you. None of that is going to get rid of that ticket. None of that is going to lead to anything positive. So, as even if in your head you're like, this is some bull, you know what? Say, okay, thank you, officer. Now... It's 2020. Everyone knows the information you need to fight a ticket is probably right on the front or back of the ticket. So there's really no reason to say, well, you know, how do I fight this? How do I call the court? Everything is on the ticket. Believe me, we are not handing you something, charging you with an offense with no information on how to handle it or how to contest it. Okay. A lot of times I would say, if you want to contest it, numbers on the back, court dates on the bottom. Okay? Very simple. There's no need to have a interaction with the police officer. The less you say, the better you are the better you are. The better off you will be. So, that may be it. Now, in the event you have something in your vehicle legally, let's say when I got pulled over, I had multiple weapons and a boatload of ammunition in the back of my vehicle. Officer said, now, typically, when I have that, I know that I have to have my firearms ID card on me. So, when they come up and they're telling me what they're talking about, whatever, I say, okay, I answer the questions. Now, at any point, if they ask if there's anything in the vehicle that, uh, I, you know, that they should know about, I will say, officer, I have a permit to uh, uh, hold firearms. Um, there are currently two firearms in the vehicle. They're both unloaded, and, but however, I do have ammunition in the vehicle in a separate container. Um, I also have my firearms ID card on me. Would you like to see my firearms ID card? Don't reach for it. Don't be like, I got a, I got a perm. I, I got a perm. Let me, let me get it. That will get you killed. 
right? That's not smart. That's not intelligent. Intelligent beings survive, right? So you say, I have a firearms ID card. Would you like to see that card? And they will most likely say yes. Or they might ask, what do you have in the car? Answer the questions truthfully. Uh, I have a Sig Sauer, da 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 da, and I have a Glock 19. What? I, okay. All right. Great. You have your firearms ID card. Yes, I do, sir. Would Would you like me to get it? Yes. Okay. It's right in my wallet, right there. Okay. Or it's in my wallet, in my or it's in my center. Okay. Okay. To get it. Okay. Great. I would throw in the caveat that the weapons are not near me. They're in the back. Okay. They're not tucked in my console or something. Okay. Would you like me to get it? Okay, great. I'm just going to go ahead and get that. Okay, great. Hand them the card. Now, at some point, they may say, do you mind stepping out of the vehicle? And at that point, you get out of the vehicle. Now, let me stop here and say this. Never get out of your vehicle on a motor vehicle stop unless you're explicitly instructed to exit your vehicle by the police officer. And when you exit that vehicle by at the command of the officer or officers, do not do a thing that they don't tell you to do. Do not reach for anything. Do not pull your pants up. I don't care if they're falling down because you're busting a sag. Do not pull your pants up. Do not reach into your pockets because you want to get your cell phone out and text your honey that you're running late because you got pulled over by the police and they're searching your car. Do not do anything that the police officer doesn't tell you to do. Is that clear, right? It makes sense, right? Because there are people out there that wanna kill police officers. And if you do anything along the lines that might raise a red flag for a police officer, well then, you're putting your life in danger, okay? Pretty simple, survival. Exit the vehicle, they wanna ask you to open a compartment or they might say, do you mind if I search the vehicle? now?" Once again, here's a moment of truth. If you have nothing in your vehicle that is illegal, that you should not have in your vehicle, I always say, officer, the vehicle is yours. Please don't try to damage anything, but you are welcome to look at whatever you want. Okay? Don't break anything. Don't damage anything. You know, please be careful. I care about my vehicles, but go ahead and you could do, look at whatever you want. Okay? That's it. And... I like to, when I'm out of the vehicle, I like to stand with my hands folded in front of me like this. I don't like to put my hands in my pockets because we don't know what's in pockets. If they want to search me, great, go ahead and search me. How would you like to search me? Would you like me to put my hands up? behind Whatever. Now, whatever they are going to do, whether you think it's BS or not, once again, the side of the room, listen, you don't plead your case to the man in uniform wearing the badge. You don't, You plead your case in a courtroom to the man or woman in the black robe sitting up a little elevated with the little hammer in front of them. And usually there's a placard in front of them that says judge so-and-so. That is who you plead your case to. The side of the road with the police officer wearing the badge is the last place to plead your case to. The last person to plead your case. Shut your mouth. I don't care if you feel like this is a gross violation of your rights. The side of the road is not the place to pick a fight, especially with the police. Keep my hands cupped. Keep them in front of me. Keep them visible. Look for whatever you want. Now, if you have drugs in the car, illegally, that you shouldn't have, this is the moment where you'd want to tell the police officer, even if you lied earlier and they suspected you're lying and now they're pulling you out of the vehicle, this is the moment. Once you get out of the vehicle, and I've had it happen where people say, Officer, I'm sorry. I have to tell you something. What's that? I do have something I shouldn't have. Okay, what do you have? Uh, I have some marijuana. Or I have some heroin. Whatever it may be. Okay. I will say thank you for your honesty. Where is it? Uh, it's in the center console or it's underneath the passenger. You know, I'll ask them where it is. And I'll say, okay, great. By then, hopefully, I have a backup officer. And we'll talk about backup officer in a second. I have a backup officer. I'll have the backup officer stand with the subject. And I will go to that area and find what they told me would be there. 
if I find it, I will bring it out and I will say to them, is this all that's in the vehicle? Is there anything else I'm going to find? Because you know that any department worth their salt is going to bring a dog out. They're going to bring a dog out. The dog's going to be searching your car, scratching in your car, and that dog doesn't miss anything. So once they find something, if they're probably going to bring the dog out, bring the canine out, just tell them. Just tell them. Because if they find some stuff and you say, oh, I forgot that was there, they're going to think you're a liar. Whether you truly forgot it was there or not, they're going to say you're a liar. Okay? And that's going to build suspicion. Because if you lied about one thing, you're probably going to lie about something else. And you're probably lying about something else. Okay? So that's the moment of truth. If you have a weapon in the car, if you have a weapon in the car, this is a bad situation. And in your mind, you're probably thinking, I'm going to go to jail. If it's an illegal weapon, I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to be doing some time. This is not good. I'm screwed. In that moment, that's when you start thinking about doing stupid shit like running like fighting when they're about to handcuff you, whatever it may be. So now, you have two options in this moment. Option one, you tell them where the weapon is, tell them what it is, and tell them exactly where they can find it. Option two is you shut your mouth and you don't say anything. And when they find the weapon and they come to lock you up, you just shut your mouth and you don't say anything. That's the two options. Guess what? The third option of running, fighting, trying to steal a weapon, or anything like that, other than when they say, I need you to place your hands behind your back, you're under arrest. At that moment, if you do anything other than put your hands behind your back and allow them to handcuff you, without fighting, without screaming, without shaking around, trying to... If you do anything other than putting your hands behind your back and allowing them to handcuff you without contest, right? You can expect things to go very bad. You can expect things to go horribly wrong. And if you are a breathing human being on this planet, in this country right now, you can also expect that there's a probability that you might get shot and you can also expect that there's a probability that you may get killed so before you make that decision ask yourself is what i'm about to do worth my life and a lot of people think oh additional charges this isn't about additional charges for resisting arrest this is about heading to the funeral home heading to the morgue instead of heading to jail so, you have a choice in that moment. If you want to run or if you want to fight, know that you could end up hurt or dead. And you must accept that. Your family must accept that. Everyone around with their cell phone must accept that. That's why the easier option is to put your hands behind your back. In your mind, be pissed because you're going to jail. You might be about to do some time and some your life is about to take a really, really bad turn. But the really bad turn of getting locked up and going to jail on a charge is a lot better of a turn than going to the morgue in a body bag. The choice is yours. Now, if you want to choose to fight for your rights because they feel like they're illegally searching your car and this is a violation of your constitution and all this stuff. That's fine. You get a good lawyer, get a good lawyer and you fight it. But the side of the road is not where you fight the police and fight for your rights and try to say that you're right and they're wrong. You will lose. You will always lose. Never in my life have I seen someone about to get arrested, handcuffs are out, and all of a sudden they started preaching law, and they started preaching violation of their rights, and they started preaching this, and they started acting out, and the cops say, oh, you know what, you're right. You're right, I'm just going to put these handcuffs away, and uh, you're free to go. Never in my life have I seen that happen. Right? Never in my life have I seen that happen. 
been a cop for a long time, was a cop for a real long time. If you think the side of the road is the time to plead your case, you're wrong. Cases are pled in courtrooms, not on asphalt. So if you are watching this video and you think anything I am saying is incorrect, you are someone with a low level of intelligence, maybe low IQ, maybe mentally challenged, I don't know. Because I'm not saying anything in this video that isn't really like crazy, right? It's like, if you got drugs, you got weapons, and you know you're caught, just shut your mouth, don't say anything, wait for your attorney, put your hands behind your back, get cuffed, and go in, and that's it, all right? And then you get your attorney, and you fight, and you fight, and you fight, and you maybe try to get a really good attorney that can get you off on a technicality, because there's a million out there, right? But the side of the road is not where you fight. You fight in the court. All right? So, there you go. You get locked up. We also think you're going to be told you have the right to remain silent. And I highly recommend you remain silent. Okay? That's it. Now, let's go back to multiple officers. A lot of people ask me this. And we're going to end on this note. Multiple officers. So, many times... When you look in your rear view and you see one cop, and the next thing you know, you see another cop pull over. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, maybe it's a new officer that is on training, and they have an officer that's called shadowing, meaning they're a young officer that pulled you over. They don't really know what the heck they're doing, so um, they, uh, they have a senior officer that's shadowing them. So it just might be a senior officer backing them up. Or... It might be an officer who says, you know what, I have someone who just told me they have drugs in the car, they have a gun in the car, and they want backup for their safety. If you were going into a situation like that, you would want backup too. So that's the only reason why you would see a second car. Sometimes I would pull up, I would make sure the officer was okay, so you'd see a second police car, and if they were okay, they gave me the thumbs up, I would just pull away. Sometimes you see that happen too. Okay. So if you don't get don't get freaked out when you see multiple police cars because sometimes it just might be training or their protocol to back each other up. We had protocols on night shift to back each other up as well, okay? So, once again, this is about survival. And um I know that oh, let me hit on one thing. So a lot of people will say when I say, you know, get an attorney. One of the things when you're read your rights is if you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you and appointed by the court, and it's called a public defender, okay? And the public defender is there to help you defend yourself in court. Now, the public defender can be anyone, anyone, and I've actually seen multiple good public defenders that actually get their clients off of charges, okay? So, don't think if you don't have money, you're just screwed. There's a program in place called the Public Defender, and you can get an attorney. And if you don't feel the Public Defender that is assigned to you is competent or has your best interest in mind, guess what? You have the right to ask for another attorney. That's right. Free of charge. Free attorney. So when people say, well, what if I can't afford an attorney? Well, it's in your rights. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you by the court. There you go. So that is the basics of surviving a motor vehicle stop, okay? Um, you can say whatever you want about who you are, where you come from, doesn't matter. The reality is this. If you go against anything I said in this video, you are someone that doesn't care about your survival, and you are someone that either cares more about being right, or someone that cares more about their ego, or more about something other than survival. So, if you are a species, and you have something in your mind that is above survival, your chances of surviving in this life are very low. Survival should be the top of what you want and need. If you put anything above that, 
And that's all I'm saying in this video. If you put anything above survival, you're putting your chance, you're putting your life on the line, and ultimately, you're a species that is not going to survive or has a reduced chance of survival. Okay, right? I don't care if you're a duck. I don't care if you're a turtle. I don't care if you're a, a lion. If you put anything above survival, you're going to die or your chances of dying are greater. Okay? So just accept that. So if you don't accept that being cordial, like I said, you don't have to kiss butt. So if you don't accept that being cordial, being level-headed, keeping your hands on the wheel, not reaching for anything, they tell you get out of the car, keep your hands visible, don't go in your... If you think any of that is stupid or wrong or I'm just some cop that's telling you to kiss guess what that is awesome good for you you are someone who is putting survival below your ego and I wish you the best in this world because most likely you're doing that in other situations too and you are most likely not going to live a long life okay so very very simple right survival very it's very simple now I'm giving you this as someone who did the job for a long time and I'm just giving you these tips because no, although you don't believe it, most cops don't want to go to work, shoot someone, and then get locked up for murder and go to jail. Jail is a very, very bad place for police officers, right? So you don't want to, as a cop, go to jail, all right? I don't know of any cop that went to work one day, put on their uniform and said, I can't wait to shoot someone and kill someone today and then go to jail and have my life ruined right? So you have to realize that the cop walking up wants to be done with you as soon as possible and wants no drama at all. The least drama possible is what the cop wants. If you introduce drama in any fashion, that cop is going to just get annoyed because I'm telling you from my experience, they're just going to get annoyed and they're going to now say, all right, you know what? This person wants drama. I'm going to just respond with drama. If you respond with level-headed... Now, I've been stopped by the police I don't know how many times. And this is, this is something else to be said. I've been stopped by the police I don't know how many times. I've been stopped with guns in my car. I have a permit to have those guns. Okay? Great. If this environment, this institutional racism, and white cops, and I've been stopped by all white cops, right? Just so happens. I think maybe years ago I was stopped by a black cop with guns in my car. How am I alive? I've been pulled out of my car. I've been patted down. My car, they've looked at what I've had in my car. And I drove away hail and hearty. Here I am. Here I am. Okay? Nine out of ten times, I wouldn't even mention I was a cop. Unless it came up. I didn't want to mention it. I just, I wouldn't even say anything. If they asked about what I did or whatever, I would say, yeah, you know, I'm an officer. Obviously, I can't say that anymore. So I just got to say where I'm coming from, where I'm going, and just be honest and own it. I don't keep any drugs in the car. I don't keep anything illegal in the car. And here I am. I drive I drive off from every traffic stop. If I get a ticket, I got a ticket. If I get a ticket, I pay it. It sucks to have points. It sucks your insurance might go up, but I pay it. Okay? That's how you survive. Right? Anything other than that, you don't want to survive. Okay? Great. Share this video with someone who you want to see survive. And... Go ahead and send us a message if you have any other questions about survival, surviving motor vehicle stops. If you have any specific questions about, okay, what if this happens or what if this happens, go ahead and send it in. I will do my best to respond. Obviously, uh, it's hard to keep up with everything, but I will you know, leave a comment below and I will do my best. Or if you'd like to see a video on something, leave a comment and uh, I will uh, do my best to respond. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, someone gained value from this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Share it. Remember, wash your hands. They said Corona's real, so wash those hands. Wear that mask. It might help, might not. All right. Take care, everyone.